G'day tradies, my name's Jamie and welcome to another Tradie Tough Test. And today we've got the battle of the ages. No, we don't really. But what we are doing is putting the Pazload Impulse Frame Master uh, through its paces. And we're just gonna be doing a bit of a, uh, a straight up comparison versus uh, the new red nailer here. So obviously um, this isn't about ragging on any products. We wanna show the strengths of both of these guns. And when I say strengths, both of these formats have some pretty impressive strengths, but I think we really main thing that we want to point out is where one gun might be more appropriate than the other in certain areas. So why don't we delve in a little bit closer right now and we'll check it out. So to do both of these guns justice, I guess it's best to first talk about, I guess, the firing system. And so the reason why Pazloads decided to stay with the fuel uh, and spark system, I guess, comes down to weight uh, and balance. So we're achieving a really compact firing system. Uh, we've got mechanical parts, which are DIY serviceable, uh, and it all comes down to size and weight. And I guess that's the reason why Pazload has been sticking with that impulse fuel and spark system. So in comparison, the battery tools use a tensioner um, or a spring, which basically uh, recoils the firing pin. Uh, and this technology has been used pretty much through, uh, I guess, when the original Senko guns. So it's not necessarily new technology. And let's have a little bit more of a chat about how that works. So the spring or the tensioner is basically what fires the pin. Uh, and the only drawback of that is the mechanical system. It is, it is quite heavy. Um, we do get a fair bit of power. It does have plenty of punch, which is great. But the disadvantage is obviously the weight. Alrighty, so when it comes to weight, I figured we'd do our own little test. So we got, um, I've stolen the kitchen scales off the missus, so I hope I don't get in trouble. Without putting any weight, I'll just sort of guide it there. Alrighty, time for the pads load. So we'll get her on the scales there. Um, obviously the gun can sit up easily on its own there. Uh, so we're looking at uh, three, two kilos. So with the pads load weighing in at 3.3 kilograms with the battery loaded and the red gun weighing in at 5.1, it's a pretty massive difference of 1.8 kilos. Alrighty, cool. So we've just skewed a few nails in. Um, I've definitely noticed that the red gun, we've really only just got those two points uh, to bite into the timber. Um, whereas with the Paz load, we've pretty much got two, four, uh, six points there, giving you a much greater ability to get on an angle to skew, um, which in itself is a pretty cool feature. All right, Zonti, how's things been going on site, mate? Yeah, pretty good, mate, as you can see. Roof's gone on, you're getting closer and closer every day. Perfect. Now look, mate, we dropped uh, the two guns down to you. We got the, the battery uh, red gun and we got the uh, Pazlite Impulse Frame Master. So I guess what we were hoping for was to leave the guns with you for, I guess it was been more than a week now, really, but just let you get used to the feel because it's obviously going to be always a little bit new when you do handle a new gun. So you've had, you had a good week to settle in, you know, get a bit of a clear picture in your mind as to what you liked about each of the guns. So what did you find, you know, from your perspective, I guess the most obvious differences between the two? Uh, for starters, the red gun there, uh, the firing mechanism, uh, awesome, it can't yep. fault it. Yep. Placing the gun down was a big one. Uh, just getting comfortable with laying it on the ground compared to the bass load. Oh, as in you found it hard to sit it down and... Yeah, it, did, okay. it kind of disrupted the flow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Yep. Cool. So what did you find in terms of usability, like the actual usability, feel? Usability, yeah, the feel of it, a uh, little bit unbalanced. Uh, the pass load, I guess I'm just used to the, the stableness of it. Uh, putting it into my apron. Yep. Um, what, as in the hook or? Yeah, the hook. Uh, the hook's just, it's got nothing to obstruct it. On the pass load, yeah. Oh, yep. okay, so. So the magazine on this one. Ah, uh, okay, the mag. Obstructing it. Okay. A little bit. No worries, no worries. Uh, the weight, you could definitely feel the weight straight away. It was okay. heavier. Okay, yep. Noticeably. Yep. So I think they're talking about, I guess, fully loaded, ready to shoot. It's about a, a 1.5 kilo difference, uh, which equates to about a 25% increase. So it is definitely heavier. We did actually weigh it and get it on the scale. So that's definitely a fact. So so that was your initial response. What did you find yeah. after, say, you know, three, four, five days of using the gun? How did you feel? Um, to be honest, at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm a creature of habit, but uh, I just keep going back to the pads load. It, um, 
I just wanted to get a bit more work done, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. It just felt better. Yeah. Uh, so, Jonti, on the servicing front, I know that you guys do like to service your own guns at Smoko and stuff with the PAS loads, so um, what do you want to share about that? Yeah, uh, the PAS load's a good, quick, easy gun to service. Uh, on the manual of this one, it uh, said you have to return it to the manufacturer. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's no little tune-ups every couple of months. No. Um, how did you find the the, the head? Because um, obviously you've got the the six aggressive teeth on the PAS load. How did you find the head for firing on the red gun? Yeah, it felt like a bit of a you could have had to guess where you're firing, and yes, it took a bit of getting used to. Yeah. Um, the barbs aren't that sharp on it either, so it's, it doesn't sort of hold on the timber where you want it. Yeah, tend to slide around a little bit. Okay, cool. So, um, any other bits and pieces that you wanted to uh, It actually has an extended mag you can uh, put in there. And you guys did have that on during the week? Yeah, I had that on for a while. Yep. Um, what were your thoughts? Trying to put it into my bout to carry on with other work. It sort of got in the way a bit and... Yep just felt unnecessary. What was the, the handling and the operational experience like? Well, the balance of it seems to be a little bit out, so it seemed the same. Front front heavy, that yep. probably add a little bit of additional bit weight. Bit of weight, yeah. I guess for the, you know, the three seconds it takes to load a new strip of nails in there, it's sort of six or one, half a dozen of the other, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, awesome, buddy. Cool, so I mean, everyone can see the size of the job here. So you guys, uh, I guess in that heavy user category, you're probably using the guns pretty much on and off most of the day, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. So who would you see, I guess, the red gun being perfect for? Because I mean, it sounds like there are a lot of positives with this gun, right? Yeah, if, if you're using it not on a day-to-day -day basis, the mechanism in it, it's fine. It's, yep. it's good. I guess all in all, it sounds like good shooting um, capabilities, but I think the weight is probably something that's a little bit restrictive for you. Yeah, the weight, the balance, and putting the gun down, it just felt awkward. Yeah, okay, cool. So I think for everyone at home, the outcome is um, red gun is a great gun, firing capabilities, um, rapid fire, there are some really awesome features with this gun, but if you're a heavy user um, that's using a, a framer on a day-to-day, -day, it's probably gonna be a little bit restrictive and extra wear and tear on your shoulder, which I guess at the end of the day, what you mentioned to me before, you're thinking about longevity over your career, right? Not yes. just a day or a week or a month. So yeah. um, that all factors into account. Yeah. Awesome, good stuff, Shanti. Thanks heaps for being our, uh, our legend today, mate. We'll catch up with you later. No worries, thank you. Beautiful. So awesome. tradies, it's been an awesome opportunity to put both these guns through their paces. And look, I think the end result of all of this testing simply comes down to, depending on what type of usage, um, both guns have some fantastic uh, strengths. Uh, if you're looking for heavy usage, uh, where you're gonna be using the gun on your hip and on your belt, lifting up above head, I think the weight factor alone is gonna be uh, the big decider that makes you go down the road of the PAS load. Um, but if you're a light user, uh, you might be uh, an electrician or someone that only needs to shoot timber uh, every now and then. I think, look, the, the red gun would be a, a fantastic gun as well. So thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you stay really safe on site out there. Till next time, take care.